सर एज अ वी हैव लॉट डिस्कस रिगार्डिंग द एट्रल फेबुलेशन फ्रॉम द कार्डियोवास्कुलर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू नाउ दिस इज अ न्यूरोलॉजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑल्सो वी वॉन्ट दैट द स्ट्रोक इज डेफिनेटली इट्स वन ऑफ द मेजर कंसर्न एज अ न्यूरोलॉजिस्ट यू हैव फाउंड इन योर पेशेंट्स बट ऑलवेज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रिवेंशन प्रिवेंशन एंड प्रिवेंशन ऑफ अ स्ट्रोक इन ए पेशेंट्स so according to your point of view what is the importance of a primary prevention and if it's not happening then what is the need of the secondary prevention in a stroke in af patients so from um, stroke point of view yeah. uh, like tia mini strokes or ischemic strokes um, atrial fibrillation is one of the main causes which uh, causes stroke and uh, unfortunately it's not picked up well enough in the general population and even if it's picked up not all of them end up uh, getting the right treatment so until recently uh, warfarin was the mainstay treatment but with the ar- arrival of the newer anticoagulants especially rivaroxaban which is uh, easy to take because it's a one stay preparation uh, it's going to change the whole scenario i think with anticoagulation in terms of primary versus secondary prevention um, i think compared to the lot of trials which has been done looking at primary prevention and so on so the bafta trial which looked at Uh, aspirin versus warfarin clearly sort of uh, prove that anticoagulant is the way to prevent a stroke if somebody has atrial fibrillation we have got multiple clinical studies uh, looking at anticoagulation versus antiplatelets um recently um with the arrival of all the novax the rocket ave trial clearly demonstrated a benefit uh, non inferiority versus warfarin and also the xword trial confirmed um, the use of rivaroxaban prevents sort of peri cardioversion um stroke incidents to a great extent and uh, as you all know it's been approved in dvt prophylaxis in knee and hip replacements yes. and so on and definitely the um bleeding risk is comparably very low yes. compared to warfarin so, so i i'm a big fan of rivaroxaban so. okay so definitely so it's a very uh, strong point has put on a rivaroxaban that it's a one of the good molecule for the secondary prevention of stroke also as well and as well as the primary prevention and the profi- uh, dvt treatment and prophylaxis part also as well so in terms of secondary prevention obviously it depends on the size of the stroke yeah. if somebody has a big stroke we i would wait for up to 12 to 14 days and then reevaluate to see when it can be restarted if it is a mild stroke like a tia or a mini stroke i would even start within 24 48 hours or up to 7 days after and as you know there are patients who may have a hemorrhagic stroke but still have atrial fibrillation okay. and in those patients uh, we still have um, a little fear in causing a major hemorrhage so in those patients it has to be evaluated on a case by case basis and then addition has to be made very carefully it's definitely is very well said now this is a, uh, uh, the second uh, concern regarding that when the acute ischemic stroke is developed in a patient then there is a definitely two kind of the management is there one is the medical conventional part and also surgical part also as well so according to your point of view how you will stand the both the kind of treatment for the uh, for the treatment of stroke in a patient so when you say um, medical versus surgical the surgical part is very little so yes. for example those strokes that need surgical intervention or like hemorrhagic strokes or patients who have subarachnoid hemorrhage and so on in a minority of ischemic stroke patients who will develop malignant mca syndrome where the whole brain swells up they may need a hemicraniectomy in those patients obviously it's not um, advisable to start anticoagulant straight away in those patients we would bridge with a similar factor 10 inhibitors like low molecular heparin and other molecules to sort of uh, tide over the acute phase and then we can carefully restart it Uh, obviously you have to take everything into consideration like the renal function liver functions patient's age um, and other drug interactions that can be affecting the drug's metabolism and so on but um so far we have not seen a major uh, negative impact with the newer oral anticoagulants so i think uh, if you choose your patients carefully and monitor the coagulation profiles so it should be fine okay so i think it's a very well uh, crisp but in detail discussion regarding a secondary uh, preven- a secondary prevention of stroke in af patients so the noex still has a very good uh, scope in this particular segment also as well though the uh, already patients in when the neurologist part is also with that patient is coming with a stroke and you have to find out the retrospectively that patient is uh, landing up with the af or not 
but still in this kind of the patient there is a very high chance of the recurrent stroke as well and to prevent that recurrent stroke the noex is one of the major role and the sir has put a very well point on the rivaroxaban that with the rocket f data and expert data is available it can be a better option as compared to the other noex and uh, regarding a uh, uh, surgical aspect and uh, medical management the medical management still it's a uh, it's a it's a on the major side as compared to the surgical segment where there is a in uh, there, there is a hemorrhagic kind of stroke then the surgical role is much much higher as compared to the noex so sir with this note uh, we are ending our discussion so thanks a lot dr shivarajan